Do you think religious groups care about climate change? Um, I think they do, but they don't. They might not do anything about it. I think maybe they believe that the God will sort everything out. Is there really a climate change, or is it just an earth replenishing itself? Some people don't. Uh... Don't think it's real or true, and some people think it could be the wrath of God for all we know. It. I'm Charlotte Dingle, and I'm on my way to Windsor, where religious leaders are getting together to discuss the future of the planet. A planet which threatens to become uninhabitable unless we do something about climate change. It's a hot topic, and they certainly don't seem to be the only ones talking about it. As a passionate young environmentalist and Green Party member, I believe that climate change is the most important and urgent issue of our time. But do people of faith agree? And if so, are they happy to leave it to some higher power to sort out? Or do they feel a responsibility to get directly involved? The religions of the world have got to come together to pay attention and to act together uh, for the sake of the, the earth. Religious people are um, conscious about the environment and they do believe that we should help the environment. Religiously in one sense, we're all little cogs in a big machine. Mm. If we don't, uh, as religious people, save the planet and start working for climate change, how can we expect other people to? Climate change is just one symptom of deeper problems about how we live and which the world's religions have particular wisdom which can help us uh, address them. It's tempting for non-religious people to think that believers in the supernatural aren't bothered by practical earthly concerns. But a central tenet of most faiths is respect for the earth. And there are a number of faith-based environmental groups out there who are already doing sterling work. WF started its climate campaign in 1994, but the World Council of Churches started theirs about two years before we did. So have already established communities all over the world and can inspire large networks of people to get involved with the campaign to save the planet. More than 80% of the people on the planet are a member of one of the main, main faiths, firstly, okay, so the vast majority of people. The faiths also have huge communications outreach. They, meet, they reach people all the time through newsletters, TV, radio, etc. and every day in, in chapels or in mosques or in, in, in uh, synagogues. And they set an example. They set an example for everybody else that, that people can follow. The other powerful tool religious groups have is the ability to inspire hope and a belief that things will work out okay if you do the right thing. We have a really, I think, clear mantra which is science informed, um, faith motivated, hope driven. We don't think the climate crisis can be solved by people just changing the light bulbs individually, little acts of virtue. We think people of faith, like with the slavery campaign, like with the debt campaign, have to mobilise, have to become visible. And so our work is with churches uh, and with politicians, actually, to get them to exercise leadership. Doing this in community is much better than doing it on your own. If you do it on your own, you think, well, I'm giving all these things up and I'm changing my life and nobody's following suit. If you do it together, it's more fun. Of course, it's not just the case of believers and non-believers needing to join forces and reconcile their differences. Different faiths have different reasons for believing our earth is sacred and worthy of protection. Judaism has 3,000 years worth of teachings which relate to the natural environment. Sikhism teaches about the environment that the earth is a sacred gift and we need to take care of it because for the short while that we're on earth, it's our place to live and it's Mother Earth so we need to take care of it. The Bible, the scriptures, the Christian faith has big things to say about our relationship to nature, our relationship to creation. We need to go back to roots and have some really basic lessons from, from our scriptures to apply to the modern world. The different faiths have not always agreed with science. This is cause for concern for environmentalists who see climate change as something grounded in scientific evidence. So, when it comes to the environment, are the faiths finally taking science seriously on the issue of climate change? But Jesus doesn't talk about climate change in the New Testament, so you know why should we listen to what you've got to say? Uh, but Jesus doesn't talk about nuclear weapons. He doesn't talk about stem cell research or computers. And does that mean that Christians shouldn't have views about these things? Religion would not have a prayer without the science because when you stand up as a religious leader from the pulpit and talk about climate change, if someone were to question you, we need to have the facts. While we don't want to be the scientific community because we're not, I think that the scientists 
are the prophets of today. I think that they are the ones we need to listen to. 85% of the world's population follow a religion. That's why it's crucial for green people like me to find ways of working with religious groups on climate change. And while we may not all agree on how the Earth was created, we can agree on the fact that there is only one Earth and that that Earth needs protecting. And if we want to save that Earth, we have no choice but to work together.